Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be doing some thrift flips with 10 easy to find items at the thrift store. But there's a twist, because in today's video, I am going to be collaborating with two of my friends, Teresa over at Our Green Acres, who has more of a shabby chic style, and Sherry over at Canterbury Cottage, who what I would say has more of a traditional farmhouse style. So we, the three of us, are going to be taking the same list of 10 easy to find items at the thrift store, and we are going to be upcycling it in our own style. So after you watch my video, you wanna hop on over to their channel and watch their videos. Now, let's get started on my 10 thrift store items. There are always plenty of frames to find at the thrift store. And I like to specifically look for thick wooden vintage frames. And anytime I find wooden spoons, I always grab them. So we're gonna be using those two thrift store items for this project. A lot of times with these vintage frames, I actually love the back of the frame more than the front. And that is the case with this one. So I'm actually going to turn the back of the frame into the front of the frame. It did not have a piece of glass or a piece of cardboard backer on this frame. So I just have a thick piece of cardboard that I cut to the size that I need. And using some spray adhesive, I am attaching a piece of drop cloth to my cardboard. Now, since I am going to be using the front of the frame as the back, there's no lip or ridge or anything for me to set my cardboard into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hot glue the drop cloth to the front of the frame and that'll keep it in place. I wanted some very tiny bird eggs for this project. However, I could not find any at the store that was small enough. So I just decided to make my own. I'm gonna use IOD air dry clay and all you do is just kind of roll it up in the palm of your hand to an egg shape. And then you're just going to let it dry. It was so easy and these turn out absolutely adorable. Once my clay was dry, I wanted to add some tiny speckles to the egg to really make them look realistic. So I have a little bit of beige paint and a little bit of gray paint and I'm just lightly dipping my toothbrush into the paint and just flicking it onto the eggs. And this worked perfectly. They truly looked like little tiny bird eggs when I was done. Now I wanna create some little tiny nests inside my spoon so I can put my little tiny eggs in them. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the spoon and just a little bit of moss. I do want it to look like a nest, but I wanna be able to see the outer edge of my spoon so it's not taking a lot of moss at all. The inspiration for this project actually came from Heidi in the Julie's Designs and Signs Facebook group. She posted this picture of a project she made and I absolutely loved it and wanted to do my own spin on it. I decided to use three wooden spoons, but I like how Heidi used a variety of different utensils and different nests and different eggs. So this is just another idea on what you could do with those utensils that you always see at the thrift store. I am just trimming off any excess moss that I have because like I said, I really want to be able to see the edges of the spoon. And now I'm going to add in my eggs. My plan was to put three eggs in each spoon, but I think I would have had to make my eggs just a little bit tinier to do that. So I just played around with the arrangement until I got it looking the way that I wanted. Then I hot glued my eggs to the nest. Now I'm going to take my three spoons and add them to my framed art piece that I created earlier. I absolutely love the way that this artwork came out. And it's definitely something that you could create over and over again and no two pieces would look alike because you would not be using the same frame and you would not be using the same utensils. If you create this project, make sure you post a picture of it in the Julie's Designs and Signs Facebook group. I would love to see what you come up with. This is the only item on the list that I had to actually go to the thrift store and find because it's not normally something I would pick up. So this was definitely the most challenging item for me. It's not showing up on camera, but the face of the clock had lots of scratches on it. So I decided to just spray paint the whole thing white. That way I just have a clean, 
fresh piece to start off with. I was not liking the detail at the bottom and the metal pieces on the side of the clock definitely gave me French country vibes. So I just decided to lean into that look and go French country with this clock. To cover up the detail that I do not like and also make this clock more French country, I'm going to be adding a mold. I am using IOD's Trimmings Mold 3 and I'm just going to add some air dry clay to it. You want to make sure you dust it with some kind of cornstarch before. That way your clay does not stick to the mold. And you can interlock these trimming molds. So I'm just going to create as many as I need to go around the entire clock. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue to attach my molds to the piece. And I don't know about y'all, but I think this looks so much better already. Now I decided to turn my clock into a piece of decor, but you could definitely not paint the face of your clock and still do all the steps that I am doing to transform your piece. Now I need to add something to the face of the clock and I am going to be using IOD's bird song mode. This is one of my favorite modes and these birds just look so cute on everything. I also think you could decoupage something on the face of the clock and that would also look amazing and kind of make it look like a round picture frame. There's so many different ideas and projects you could do with a clock like this. I'm gonna attach my birds to the piece using Gorilla Glue and then I am going to let my clay dry overnight. My friend Jackie at Ruth and Ruby sent me this fusion mineral paint in this French eggshell color because she thought that I would love it. And I do. I think it is not only the perfect color for spring, but also the perfect color if you are going for a French country look. And if you love this color too, I will make sure to leave a link in the description below. So I'm just going to paint the entire piece with one coat of paint. Now I was not expecting full coverage on the first coat, but it is almost full coverage with just one coat of paint. However, I do want to add some texture to this piece since there are lots of places where it is, you know, just flat and slick. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of baking soda to the fusion mineral paint. And then I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and I am just going to stipple the baking soda and paint mixture on the entire piece. This is going to create a lot of texture that we are going to want for our next paint technique. Also, I find just adding texture definitely gives it more of a French country look. And what also makes a piece look very French country is when you add white wax. So that will be our next step and all of that texture that we just created, that white wax will really bring it out. Now I actually create my own white wax using clear wax and about a spoonful of white paint and I will leave a link in the description with the clear wax that I use. And that way I can create the exact color of white wax that I want. So once I apply my white wax to the entire piece, I'm just gonna come back with a dry paper towel and wipe off all the excess wax. Like I said, I thought this was my biggest challenge of the entire video. So please leave a comment below and let me know how you think this clock turned out. And if you are not a person that really puts clocks in their house either, just think of them as a piece of decor that you can upcycle and make your own. If you watch my channel, then you know that I love thrifting vintage books and use them all around my home when decorating and styling. However, I know in some places it may be more difficult to find vintage books. So I'm gonna show y'all a way to take books that you can find at almost any thrift store and give them a more vintage feel. I grabbed these books from the thrift store and this is what they look like without their dust jacket. So we're gonna transform these three books. First, I'm gonna start off with this solid blue one. It has a lot of texture on it, like vintage books, but the spine is too bright. Um, the, the type is too bright and it's just in too new looking condition. So did y'all know that you could actually sand books to give them a more vintage look? 
So that's exactly what we're gonna do. If you have an orbital sander, you could also use that and that makes for a much quicker process. And it's as simple as that. With a little sandpaper, you can make a brand new book look old. I actually love when I find books that are missing the spine. So we're gonna try to create that look with these other two books by removing the hard cover using an exacto knife once you remove the hard cover on both sides you are left with the spine and it should come right off and this is what it looks like underneath i love the way that this looks but i also want to mention that this works best if you start off with an older book because the older the book the more worn and the more texture that spine is going to have I really like this look and the way these books came out. So if you have been on the hunt for vintage books and have not been able to find any in your area, this is a great option to try. I love picking up kitchen items at the thrift store and upcycling them and reimagining them. And this nice, thick, sturdy baking pan will be the perfect base for my next project. I am actually going to be using the back of the baking pan and I want to paint the entire piece white. You could absolutely spray paint this, but I'm going to be using country chic paint in the color crinoline. It is a very pretty white and I'll have a link to it in the description below. I'm going to put two coats of paint on here. Then I'm going to come back and just lightly distress the edges and smooth out my paint using 220 grit sandpaper. I want to create a sign out of this baking pan. So on my computer, I typed out the words and printed them out just on regular computer paper. And then I taped my pieces together. I am using painter's tape to attach it to my piece. You want to make sure you use painter's tape because if you use any kind of other tape, it may pull up the paint on your piece. And then under my paper, I just have carbon paper. I will also have this linked in the description. It came with this little tool. So I'm just using that to outline all the letters that I have, and then it will be transferred on to my baking pan. Next, I'm going to use a water-based Sharpie marker, and I am going to go over the letters that I just traced. You just want to go slow and steady and make sure you do not hit your wet paint. It does take a minute for the paint from the paint pen to dry. I have a pretty steady hand, but you're definitely not looking for perfection. I like making my signs this way because it gives it more of a handmade look. Now, I do realize that I am missing the O in love, but that's because we are going to do something different from that. I have this cute little tiny baking pan that I attached a little ribbon to, and now I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue on the back of this ribbon and that will attach this baking pan to my other pan making the most adorable O. To create a hanger for my pan, I'm gonna drill out two holes in the center and then run a ribbon through it. I decided to turn my baking pan into a sign, but I think there are so many things that you can do with this. You could add some clips and put some pictures of your kids cooking, maybe some family recipes, maybe some artwork. Just think of your baking pan as a background. You cannot go wrong thrifting a small wooden crate. There are just so many different things that you could do with it. If you have been wanting to try a transfer, I highly recommend the IOD Brocant transfer. It has eight pages in it, and these designs are perfect for small pieces. I have been using this packet for so many different projects. For this project, I decided to use the white flowers because I am not going to be painting the crate. I thought the white flowers would really stand out. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut my transfer apart where I think it would naturally maybe come apart and then I'm going to piece it back together on my crate. That way I could do the front of the crate and also do some of the sides of the crate. I'm even cutting it up on the crate just so that the transfer is not all in the cracks. I wanna try to get as much of it as possible on the crate. And then you're just gonna take your transfer tool and you're gonna rub your transfer and it comes off really easy. You'll kinda see it change in colors as it releases from the backer paper. 
So you don't have to use the transfer exactly like it comes. You can cut it up and piece it together just like I am doing. So I'm gonna take all the pieces of this transfer and then put it back together on the crate to create the look that I want. Now this crate is looking pretty good, but I have a feeling adding some white wax will take it to the next level because that is what white wax always does. Also, when you are using transfers on wood, you definitely want to seal them in. So if you don't use a white wax or an antiquing wax, you definitely want to use a clear wax. I love the way that the white wax looked on this. It made it a little bit less rustic and a little bit more French country, all of the white wax really stayed in all the grooves and texture of the wood. And I feel like it really brought the transfer and the crate together. So you're just going to apply your white wax and then with a lint-free rag or a paper towel, you are just going to wipe it off and look how amazing this looks. I told y'all, white wax always brings pieces to the next level. I'm gonna apply wax to the entire piece, including the inside of this crate. That way it all looks the same. I really like how this crate came out and I love using crates when decorating. It is just a perfect piece to put all of your favorite items in. And then you could put it on a coffee table, a kitchen counter, or just a little decorative chair like I did. Baskets are probably one of the things that I thrift the most. And what I liked about this basket is it had that solid wood background. I like the rectangular shape. It is missing a handle and you could remove the other handle, but I am not. We are going to do something with that one handle. I want the wood background to be white, so I'm gonna go in very carefully with my country sheet paint and paint it. However, it is chalk paint, so if I get a little bit on the basket like I just did, it is really easy to go in with a wet paper towel and just wipe it right off. So I'm gonna paint my wood background and then I'm gonna come back and lightly distress it. I was not planning on white waxing this basket, but once I had the background painted white, I decided to go ahead and white wax the entire basket. Now it does take a minute to do this, so you just wanna make sure before you start that is definitely something that you want to do. And I think it really just gave this basket more of a spring look, so I personally liked the white wax look. I thrifted this little glass jar and I think it is the perfect piece to add to this basket. And I'm gonna use Gorilla Glue to attach it. You just wanna make sure that you let this dry overnight before you mess with it. I styled this basket for a kitchen using the remaining handu to hang a tea towel. However, I think it would also look great in a bathroom. You could hang a hand towel and you could change out the floral in the glass jar for the different seasons. Like I said, baskets are one of my favorite things to thrift. So I wanted to give y'all some other ideas on how I use thrifted baskets in my home. Of course, you can get the bigger baskets and fill it with blankets and books and even dirty laundry. You can add greenery to your baskets. You can even paint your baskets and add IOD transfers to them. You could use them just as shelf sitters and decor to add texture and interest in your background. This looks really great if you have lots of white in your house. You can also hang them on your wall just like you would a piece of artwork. They also make great trays and are so fun to style. I am always on the lookout for canister sets at the thrift store and I have done lots of videos where I have completely transformed these canisters that I found. But when I can find a solid white canister set, I definitely grab it because it is the perfect base to add an IOD transfer to. I am gonna be using the IOD traditional pots transfer. It is full of these different labels that you can stick on your items and it comes in blue, white, and black. 
I want my canisters to continue to look like a set. So I chose two labels that look similar and they had little angels on them. I like to tape my transfers in place and then you just, you know, go over it with the transfer tool. Now, when it is a very slick surface like this, it comes off very easy. So when you put it down, you wanna make sure it is in the right place. And that is why I always tape it down with that back piece of paper in place and make sure it is exactly where I want before I remove it. And as you can see, I am rubbing it and lifting it up and making sure everything has transferred. You want to lift it up very slowly because if you missed a piece, all you have to do is put it back down and rub on it a little bit more. I am not going to be sealing this transfer because it would totally change the look of the canister set. So you don't want to stick it in the dishwasher, but if you wipe it down with a towel, it will be fine and not come off. Look how amazing this came out. It looks like this transfer was actually printed on this canister. Now I want to show y'all what transfers look like on glass. I specifically thrifted this jar because of the blue lid. I knew that it would look great with one of the blue traditional pot transfers on it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go over it with my transfer tool and it comes off really, really easy on glass. I'm kind of piecing together two different labels here. So I'm going to put my first transfer on and then I'm gonna go in and put the second one with the little tiny words on it. These transfers are such an easy way to make a plain piece look amazing. However, if you do not have a plain piece and you have a canister set that you want to completely transform, like I said, I have lots of videos doing exactly that. So I will make sure to leave those in the description below if you would like to check them out as well. There are so many glass pieces to choose from at the thrift store. So I want to give y'all a few more ideas on how I use them in my home. Although I just use glass pieces on two of my thrift flip projects, for the most part, I just pick out unique pieces of glass that I already love and just style them throughout my house with a piece of greenery or sometimes on their own. I especially love picking up these juice containers because they normally have a very pretty pattern on them and look absolutely beautiful with some greenery in them. I got this cutting board from the thrift store. I really liked the shape of it. It is half black. I'm not sure if that's how it was purchased or if somebody started to paint it, but I decided to paint the rest of it black and distress it. And then I didn't like how that looked. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this white using the Country Chic chalk paint. I'm gonna put two coats of paint on here and then lightly distress it, bringing back some of that black and some of that natural wood. Now, just like with the baking pan, I want you to think of this cutting board as a background. So you could add words to it and make it a sign in your kitchen. Or this time, we are actually gonna be adding clips and adding some sentimental artwork to this. I love artwork that has a meaning. So I got a recipe card from my grandmother and also a picture and I wanna add both these pieces to this cutting board. Now what would make it extra special is if it was actually a cutting board from her, but it is not, but that is a great idea. If you have a cutting board or a pan or something from a loved one's house, take it, paint it if it's not your style and put a picture of them on it and put it up in your house. That artwork would be so much more special than anything that you could buy at the store. I really like the way that this turned out and I hope it has inspired you to look at pieces like this in a different way. All right, guys, what did y'all think about today's video? I tried to not only give y'all thrift flips, but also some like design and decorating ideas to do with these items. So y'all let me know if y'all enjoyed that. Also leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I created in this video. 
Do not forget to head over to Teresa and Sherry's channel. I cannot wait to hop over there and see what they did because we did not talk about it. We came up with the list, but we did not talk about what we were going to be creating. So I am so excited to find out if we truly came up with 30 different unique ideas for these easy to find thrift store items. And of course, I will have a link in the description below to their channels and to their videos. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and I will see y'all in the next one.